I've been in Florida for about one week now. Um, I guess a little over. We just had the boat show and it was great, super productive. I was very happy to talk to a lot of my sponsors in person and get some stuff planned for this month and the future. I'll go into that as events come up. But today I am getting my rigging inspected, so I'm about to go pick up to get that checked out. Um, if I'm going to be gone for over a year and going a little bit further, I'd really like to have an ease of mind with that. I think I am going to replace all my running rigging. Um, Mari Pro will be helping with that. So, And then I also have Deck It Teak coming around 11. So rigging is coming in about 20 minutes and Deck It Teak is coming about two hours and the teak is going to be going it's going to be fake teak on the sides of the boat so I'm very excited about that and it's a big day I haul out tomorrow and all that work starts tomorrow so I've just been kind of doing some small projects around the boat and tomorrow we'll start all the big stuff so. Rigging just left and um, no major issues. I was already gonna do the running rigging and they agreed. Um, just some locks here and there. One of my safety lines is kind of coming apart. Some simple stuff. I My furler's been messed up since I got the boat, since before I got the boat. And they also agreed that I should just get a new one, not try to fix it. And they also said I should probably just get a whole new wire in the process, so that's gonna be an added um, thing. I'll get to learn a little bit. <laughs> and, um, but that was all pretty good and nice um, ease of mind for that. Haul out is in two hours. It's 8.30, haul it's at 10.30. I'm about to put the dinghy up and um, start raising anchor the bridge here I want to get the 945 bridge here and then I can get the 10 o'clock bridge and then got that gives me 30 minutes to make it to haul out from the bridge which should be fine there's no wind today really well there's a little bit not bad hopefully it stays that way it's my first haul out um, solo I'm very nervous. I'm going to spray WD-40 on the steering quadrant to court the autopilot because hopefully I can get the rudder dropped without the drama from last time. I'd like it to go smoothly. I'm nervous. And I need to raise the anchor. That's going to take... Usually, like, in the Bahamas, I can see where the anchor is, and here I can't. So... This is going to be fun. If Raph and Sasha don't go work out on Spirit Animal, um, I told them if I yell to come over and help. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm ready for this one list to be fixed. I'm on time so far. Let's see how this anchor does. It's so muddy here that I am a little worried about it. But I have a new fancy stick thing, so... I'm going to try to clamp this on and see if, I don't really know where I can clamp it to optimize, but we'll see.
chefs are working, apparently. I can hear everyone, but I can't do anything about it. I can't talk in it, so I have to phone each bridge. But they, he was kind enough to open, even though I called at the, at 45. ready by the fenders ready. I think as long as I can get to port, I can do it there. in this grave I'm your last call cause you're about to walk through places they don't know you if they don't know you it ain't safe y'all how am I lined up I have a long line on my starboard so I'll throw starboard to you first and then I'll go grab the port for you I'm okay So there's one bolt that's still like impossible to get out, but I just eventually lifted the quadrant completely up and off, even with the bolt in. So. Since I am hauled out, I figured there's no better time to explain all the projects, all the major projects I'm doing, and why I am doing them. There are a lot of things that went wrong this season. You guys have witnessed a lot of them, but I want to go into why some of those things happened and how I'm going to fix them. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Um, in Puerto Rico, a lot of people, I haven't gone into the full story 
So here it goes. In Puerto Rico, my dad and I flew down for the sea trial, and on that sea trial, the original Perkins engine, which I was going to keep, threw a rod. My two options were to buy a new engine or the owner was going to rebuild. We compromised, he paid for the install, I bought the new engine. The job was not done correctly and I made it all the way back to Florida and back to the Bahamas from Puerto Rico within 10 days, but on about that 14th day the engine hydro locked. I had ran it that morning and we stopped for two hours to dive and it wouldn't start. That was the first thing. Actually, that was the second thing. First thing was when I have to move my whole centerpiece in the boat, which is where my solar controllers are. We noticed on our trip to Florida that the solar was not charging the batteries and come to find out when they reinstalled all of the pieces above the engine, they put the positive into the negative and the negative into the positive on the solar controllers, frying my controllers. That was one more thing I had to do. I could not run any of my electronics. And I was lucky on our sail to Florida that the wind was high and therefore the wind generator was bringing power into the boat for autopilot. But the second that wind died, autopilot went out. The rest of the issues were on the bow of the boat. And I wrote some things down just so I remembered. So when the engine threw the rod, the owner decided to sail into a dock. And it was a very big open bay. However, the wind picked up right when we were docking, therefore resulting in some bow damage on the boat. The owner and I had a long talk and agreed that as long as everything was fixed prior to how it was the first time I saw the boat and how it was supposed to be sold, I would still buy the boat. However, this has resulted in a lot of issues this past year. Number one, they had to take off the roller furler and tie it down while they did all the work on the bow, including the stem head fittings and the chain plate. They actually had to redo some of the fiberglass on the front as well. The fiberglass jaw was actually done beautifully. The boat was there for four months before I sailed it back. They had four months to do these jobs and still morning I left Puerto Rico, they were still installing stuff like the chain plate. We had no issues with the bow on the way back. However, we did notice that the roller furler where it rolls was separated. That was red flag number one. They told me it was just a bearing. However, this time in Florida, I am replacing the entire thing because there's absolutely no way to fix it. Expense number one, I did not anticipate. However, at the beginning, with the second new engine I had to buy, I did not have the budget to do that and I just had to be extra safe throughout my time this season cruising in the Bahamas. The second thing that went wrong was the windlass. As you all have watched, I have been raising my anchor manually for five months. I didn't film a lot of it, but it was a struggle and I did not move my boat that much until the end because of it. It was one of the biggest struggles, big hazard, and again, another thing that was not supposed to happen. I chose to replace the windlass because the original windlass was a manual down, but electric up and I wanted to be able to control my windlass from the helm, therefore I got a new windlass. Came to bite me because I was stuck raising it by hand for five months, but that is the reason I replaced it and I got it done in Puerto Rico because I did not have enough time in Florida before I had to get back to the Bahamas due to all the work on the boat taking so long. As the windlass started to break, I finally noticed that the bow roller, the roller was not rolling. That was another issue caused when they put the stem head fitting back on the boat. They did not weld it right, therefore it would not roll. So that was another issue that was supposed to be fixed in Puerto Rico that I am now responsible for. Another thing was the navigation lights. They were installed very last minute and I had to scrounge for them in Puerto Rico and they weren't even installed correctly. So that was another thing I had to take care of. Thankfully, it was not a big cost and I was able to do it myself, but the other things such as re-welding for the bow rollers, getting the new roller furler, a second brand new engine, plus a new muffler and a whole new exhaust system, the chain plate, getting the windlass fixed, all this will be added cost this round. But I'm very happy I can get these things done because that means I will be safer on the water and able to continue producing content for you guys. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to fix these to begin with, so I'm very grateful for you, but I did want to go through the things that broke on this boat due to bad insulation when I bought it. So the solar controllers, the engine, the navigation lights, the windlass, the bow roller, the chain plate, everything that broke is hopefully fixed this time around in Florida. I have two months to do it, 
and I have contacted a lot of people so hopefully these all get fixed and this will not all be happening in this next video but it will slowly be happening and I did want to point out one more thing you guys saw my rudder just now get dropped and that is because there was rudder play way back in the spring and I attempted to fix it but I used Sikaflex because I couldn't get my hands on epoxy in time the Sikaflex did not hold but we're pretty confident that the epoxy will hold we are doing the same method I did back in the spring. I actually hired someone to do it this time around to make sure it's done correctly. However, we're doing the same exact method, just using epoxy. So if you have a rudder bearing that is loose and causing play in your rudder, that method way back then does work. I'm really happy to finally get all of these things done, and I hope you enjoy these next few episodes where... We're doing it all and I'm really excited for some of the upgrades and just getting all of this fixed. Not all of this will be filmed in a lot of detail because I'm not necessarily the one doing it, but it should all be fixed by the time I head back to the Bahamas and I'm super grateful for you all and I appreciate you all following along and sticking with me throughout this journey.